All right. I think. Let's hope it stays running this time. And uh, we'll pick up, we'll go back a few steps, just in case we can start this over. We're going to install the water mod today. And basically, I deleted out of the water mod folder a couple of PDF files because we don't need them. Then you're going to copy your water mod folder. And again, exclamation point water mod will get you the mod. It's also on Marhu's site. And we copy the water mod folder into our map class map. And I put it under objects. And there it is with all the files. Then I'm going to take the water mod dot Lua file, and hopefully this stream stays up. I apologize for that, guys, but it could have something to do with Windows 10 or just uh, who knows. I'm going to cut the water mod Lua file out of the water mod folder and put that into my scripts folder because I like to keep my scripts together when at all possible. It makes it very easy. And put that in there. It's very simple. Then we need to go back to find our mod description file in our map and edit that with notepad plus plus. And look at the weird little letters here. All right, we're going to go down and where you find your extra source files. Let's copy the one right above it here. Drop in. Basically, your path has to be map scripts, so that's why I copied. And then we got to get the actual name of it's going to be watermod.lua, but I want to make sure I have the case correct again. So let's see. It's capital W and a capital M. So we're just going to change this here to watermod.lua. And that will register the script for the water mod, which is the easy part there. Actually, this is a relatively easy mod to install, if I can remember correctly. It's been a while. But uh, let's see. Now that we have all our files in our map, we're going to open up our map class map by double-clicking on our map01i3d file. And as that's coming up, I think everything's working. I couldn't get Cortana to open up the, uh, which is the new <laughs> voice activated thing, to open up the Giants editor yet with a map already in it. We'll have to work on her, see if, I don't think they have training for the Microsoft voice activation. Here's our map. All right. Let's see. We do have some areas over here. And we'll start off with our chicken area. Basically, what you need to do is go to your import i3d file. And we're going to go to our objects, water mod, and you'll see you have a chicken water, chicken wheat, cow, a fass, and a sheep. We're going to start with the chicken water. We open that up. And here we have our chicken water mod. It's called in water. What we're going to do is cut the water mod, and this is the mo critical part, and find your animals, which are... Where did our animals go? It's been so long, isn't it? I thought it was under all you need. Animals. Go to your chicken husbandry and in the tip triggers folder we're going to paste the Hoonan water tip trigger it has to be in the tip triggers folder right there in the chicken husbandry section while we're at it I'm gonna bring in the chicken wheat one as well and we're gonna scroll down we'll And we'll cut the wheat one. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to paste that right underneath the tip triggers as well. 
and there they are the uh, water and wheat so we'll highlight the first one and with our good old control left control and the B button you press those two then you click your mouse and there it is right in front of you now these here are pretty simple we're gonna rotate it I like to make sure I'm at oh, it's gonna go the other way minus 90 degrees so it's even with the fence and typically they have these just installed inside your fence line with the box being toward the outside which is important because that's where you're going to be able to fill your water up by driving through the tip triggers right there and if you don't put the boxes on the outside you won't be able to get inside the fence unless you leave a door which would be a nice thing anyway to have a door to get in here I also like to do here I'm gonna move it down here because what I also like to do is rather than putting boxes everywhere I kinda and you'll notice on my maps as well with the square brush everything looks so weird with the new interface the little blue arrows are here with the Windows 10 kinda weird but I like to put a little dirt cutout where the tip trigger is so people that are pulling up know that well something's probably there at least and then I'm gonna move and just do a little bit one here I'm not being neat or anything right now but there you go next thing is to bring over the wheat one Con left control B click we're gonna rotate that the same way put it on the inside of my fence and pretty much the chicken is almost set up but there's one other thing that we gotta look at here and that is inside these triggers you're going to see your animal places and animal places are where the animals come up to the trough you don't want to move the animal places but if your navigation mesh like here is too far away and not actually under the animal placement you're not going to be able to reach the trough so you're gonna have to do a little bit of editing of your navigation mesh which I'm gonna turn on chickens are if you remember correctly in fillet your number two and you should see it come up white and at least for in front of the trough which again let's go back up here we got add make sure your ad is selected and the number two we're going to just bring it out it's tough with this because f unfortunately the blocks are big so yeah you might have a chicken in your water on this one it, it's one of those things where if you're gonna really be technical we might have to slide the whole fence out just a little bit to get it in the right position but there is one other way around it and we'll bring the other one over here too and that is you can see how there's where the old navigation mesh was it put a border around and that's where the width of the chicken is what we can do because the width of the chicken is actually going to be if we make the width of the chicken larger it'll just move the navigation mesh back a little bit if we need to but let's see where it falls so go back up to your chicken navigation mesh and we're going to create the navigation mesh again with channel number two and thanks for the follow there DJ Iceman channel number two selected because two is for the chickens and we just click the recreate button let's see where the blue so see how the blue comes into you don't want the chickens to walk in your water which I knew that would happen so let's go back up to create navigation mesh and right here where you have this radius if you move it back it'll give a wider white line radius and move it back a little bit so I'm just gonna bump that up to let's try point eight and then recreate it again and there you go point eight brings it right outside so the chickens aren't gonna be walking in your water but they will be able to reach your animal places because the animal places will select that one more time 
are actually in the blue zone. So that's one way you can uh, do it simply without moving your whole fence. It does, however, create a bigger border around the outsides. Other than that, you could take the time and move your fence. If it's a larger area, it's not as big a deal having the more border around the outside, but for that one, it's kind of small. Hey, the chickens are going to walk around. That's the important thing. Over here, we had the sheep one. And there's the wool pallet spawner. So it's pretty much the same process, but you're going to bring in the sheep water, which is labeled sheep i 3D in the same folder. And it's called Shaft Trianc when you import it, which probably stands for sheep water or something. But whatever it is, we're going <laughs> to cut that out. And we're going to go up to our sheep husband, husbandry. And you will see the feeding trough under the tip triggers already. So we're just going to highlight the tip triggers group, group and paste that in there. And it'll go right underneath it. And then we can bring it over here with the left control B click. And we'll rotate that to our minus 90 degrees as well. And this one's just a slight bit different. Let's find where a fence set, yeah, right, fence set begins and ends. So there's the beginning. I'm going to take this one out for starters. And we're probably going to need to take this one out as well, but I'm going to just slide it down. And you can do this. If you get it, you won't get the flashing if you get it right over the top, or you can use a smaller piece of fence just going to want to slide that whole thing, make sure you have the whole group selected, right into I like to try to line up the uh, post with the metal somewhat. I'm not going to go all the way in right now, only because I don't want to reset that navigation mesh again as well, and I don't want the sheep to be walking in my water. And as it is, they might walk in there a little bit because it's kind of close. And I don't know if there's an end post on this fence, but if there is, I'm going to find it. Alan Boss, thanks for the $5 donation. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. So, garden fence end. Is that where it is? Let's grab one of those. We're going to control D to duplicate it, and let's see if it's the right one. No, it's not. Was I in the garden fence? Fence 3 end. That's the one I need. Duplicate that one. Bring it over. Get rid of that one. So the end post is just simple little post. Make it squared up at zero. Put that into place and once again I'm just going to check my water mod for my animal places not on the feeding trough trigger but the shaft trank you have your animal placements and they should be set oh here's the water one down here I guess I put I didn't have two posts you need another one of these bring it over got a little confused there ta-da alright can actually slide this whole thing over a little bit too. Make sure you always select the whole group so every piece moves accordingly. There we go. All right, now we're going to check our animal places. Just make sure that they fall inside the blue section so the animals can reach them. And they're preset already with the mod, so they're kind of evenly spaced, one in the middle, one on each end, and that's where the animals will walk up to. So that is the animal sheep water. The most important thing to remember is to make sure that you're putting these in the tip trigger section. All of them will have many settings that are already created. The trigger index is 2 and that just tells you that that's where it's going all the indexes are created it just needs to know where to find them the, the script does which is under the tip trigger section of the animals 
And then we have one other one over here, which is going to be the cow one, which is the same process. And when we get these in, we will see what happens. Now, I don't have the cow barn here, but we are going to stick the water in anyway. I'm going to stick it right up front here next. Uh, well, we'll stick it down the side. And we're going to cut that. That's just labeled Treyenke. Edit. Cut it. Go up to our cow husbandry folder now. And in that tip trigger folder, which it has several of them, we're going to paste our water mod right at the bottom. With that done, we have it highlighted. Control B, click it over here. There we go. We're going to have to rotate it 180 degrees. So from 90 to minus 90, because remember, we need to have the trigger boxes on the outside so you can fill them. And we'll take out, well, we'll start on that fence piece. We're definitely going to need two of them out of here at least. Well, probably three. Some people I've seen leave the fences in, but it doesn't quite look right crossing right through your trough. And move that in, make sure we're not, well, our cows are going to get pretty close. I'm just going to back it up a little bit. And we need a fence post for the end of this fence. Let's see if we can find one. Fence one short, fence one end, right there. Duplicate it. Slide it up here. Again, I'm not being too critical because it just takes some time. You might want to extend your fence. And with fences, just for a quick explanation, if you do run into a problem where you just can't get a fence piece to fill a tiny gap, I do it all this all the time is move this fence down. Most people aren't going to notice if you scale this up to 1.2 on the X is even too much. 1.1 1 .1 and maybe even 4 there. So you can close your gap up by just extending that one piece and it really doesn't look much different than the one next to it. It's just slightly longer but it helps close your gaps so animals can't squeeze through and it would take a pretty big gap for the cows to squeeze through there. So there you go we have now there is one other piece and I've never used it I'm assuming it's another cow feeder by the way it's set up and by the uh, manual so let's load that in what the heck it's a water tank and it's called fast compol and it goes and I imagine any of these can go in any of the trigger sections but let's put that into the cow mesh trigger just for kicks anyway and we'll show you what that one is and we'll see if we can get it to work if not you don't need it but I've never used it so I'm learning with you to see exactly just what this little tanker does you might have seen it on other maps it has triggers for filling, but it also has your animal places, one, two, and three. And actually, you can drop this right in the mesh because they're just going to walk up to the to the tanker. So I believe that most people stick these like right like here and give themselves a door. And for now, we have plenty of room I can drive in there because the mesh is open. And it's another water trailer. You can see you'll be filling the water up and it goes on, uh, comes out into that. So let's give that one a try as well. Pretty simple. It's in the mesh. The cows actually can walk through it. So that is a problem. So without, uh, well, we can try to recreate the navigation mesh on this and see what happens. I don't know if he has it set up, but let's see what happens. We'll go to the create. Well, let's make sure we have our cow nav mesh selected. 
info la layer is zero for cows create your navigation mesh and the cows always have a radius of 1.3 I believe it is 1.2 or 1.1.3 will be good and the uh, info layer is set to zero let's recreate and see if it actually builds it around the no it did not go figure the mesh is still underneath now technically speaking we should be able to highlight the mod and turn on our build nav mesh mask set it to zero I always have problems with these they never work right I hate them but let's try this again uh... make sure you have the yeah let's where'd the window go there you are close that down you always want to make sure you have the cow nav mesh selected or whatever mesh you're working on before you try to create them or you're going to get an extra one and when you re recreate always use the recreate button again if you don't you'll get one way down at the bottom there so give me back that window info layer is set to zero okay let's see what happens now there you go so that's how it's supposed to work if you remember with the barn when we had it here the roof kept getting covered but we do now have and hopefully we don't get the errors from the fence like we had before as well a trough the cows won't walk through the trailer let's give that a save and open it up and see what happens now a little bit later we're gonna be on PV rivers showing you some of the new stuff in there driving around and doing our PV rivers preview we're not going to jump into Pleasant Valley version 2 tonight, but we will definitely be revisiting it and showing you all of everybody else's, all the donation signs that have come in. They will be added, and we will do another preview. And we're going to be streaming live on PV version 2 once it's released, and actually probably even a few days before it's released. And we even talked about doing a 24-hour stream as well just to let you know we are going to be revisiting it but for the little while we're going to be doing some PV rivers as we're developing it and it's getting interesting over there little by little so let's try something new according to Windows 10 let's see if this works if I say hey Cortana Run Farming Simulator 15. Okay, here's Farming Simulator 15. I love that. <laughs> oh, that's the geek in me. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to have her do it again. Why? Because I got to set my mod folder switcher. Let's run that to the map class. No, I don't know, have her trained. I don't think that she won't. She might have picked up mod folder switcher. But let's try that again. Hey, Cortana. Run Farming Simulator 15. Uh, she didn't do it that time. I don't want to search Farming Simulator 15. Hey, Cortana. Run Farming Simulator 15. Not Rhonda Farming. Oh, man, she's a... Hey Cortana, run Farming Simulator 15. She'll get used to it. Opening Farming Simulator 15. <laughs> that is not a new bot. That is Windows 10. It's included in Windows 10. Uh, Cortana, it's all part of the new packs. Ooh, there's press Win plus G to open Game Bar. Let me try that. Never saw that. Ooh, look at this. Xbox, record that, screenshot, start recording, and settings. Yeah, well, we'll have to play with that a little bit later. Try your very white voice. <laughs> hey, Cortana. Hey, Cortana. Tell me a joke.
What's brown and sticky? A stick. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let's jump into <laughs> the map class map really quick. She has a different joke every time I ask her. Hey, Cortana. What's your favorite color? Right now, it's turquoise. Oh, that's nice to know. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Cortana. Who's the fairest of them all? Oh, uh, <laughs> I guess she doesn't know what that means. Hey, Cortana. Tell me a joke. A ham sandwich walks into a bar, and the bartender says, Sorry, we don't serve food in here. <laughs> oh, Giant's engine stopped working. I am betting it's a stupid nav mesh on the... Uh, or it's Grandua Cortana. <laughs> Let me check my log while I'm booting up here. It, it might be the nav mesh on that. Every time I put something in the darn cow zone with that stupid thing the way you're supposed to, it screws it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to run one more time and see what happens in boot up of the map class with that opened up. And if it throws up those errors, we're removing that water tank. Dun, dun, dun. And if not, it's Cortana's fault. Stop putting my jokes in her voice. <laughs> Warning, splittable meshes need to be closed. Yes. I know that, and that is what's happening when I get this stupid... That's what it is. It's that water tank is weird, but that's what's causing the error. Hey, it actually ran up that time. So I don't expect... I don't expect the cow thing to work 100%, but at least we got it to load up. And that is one of those stupid bugs that's been happening on this map. We'll get some money. Hopefully I have a mod in here that I can drive around. A... Oh, crap. Do we have a water trailer? I, have it. I don't have the dolly. Wait a minute. Well, here's an interesting thought. Will that work on the in-game dollies? I have no idea. Let's find out. Or, well, we'll just grab the mobile water tank. It'll be easier. Mobile water tank. I don't even know if I have a place to get water on this map, but we're going to find out if I can get it in the little pond we put in. And a uh, tractor. Oops, wrong button. Tractors. Get me something that won't get pulled into the water when I try to get it. That one works. <laughs> hey, Cortana, get Dave a water trail. It doesn't work yet. That's funny. <laughs> what of me, oh boy, you gotta stop with that stuff. You're killing me. There's a water trailer. Hey, Cortana. Why is my gas pedal not working? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Guess I gotta use the old keys. I gotta fix my steering wheel setup. Cortana doesn't have it set up yet. Oh my gosh. W A S D. That. That's like foreign to me. Oh uh, yeah, you can guarantee I'm gonna end up in the lake with uh, WASD keys. Oops. 
That's called hitting the E key instead of the D. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, we had to fill the implement. Back it up, I think. Oh, maybe not. Oh, let's see. Let's see. This is this is tricky. Guess uh, in between the break, you know where I'm going to be. Fishing my water trailer. There we go. We got water. Fishing it out of the lake. Yeah, Windows 7 does have the <laughs> voice commands, but it's not as fun as Cortana. Hey, Cortana! You can't hear me when I'm in a game. Whoops. That's the eject button again. Guess I gotta go back and uh, fix my steering wheel. Over here! Where's our animals? Oh, we need to have animals, don't we? Well, we can try to buy them and watch the server crash. But hey, that's what's fun. I do have a problem with one of the nav meshes, but we'll get some cows anyway. Not going to get a lot, just want to make sure they take water. And everything else is working. Thernadad's back to his old gardening tricks, I see. Uh, that's where I'm supposed to hit the A key. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get into this. Man, I don't know how you guys drive with the keyboard. That is crazy stuff right there. I haven't done it in so long. I keep hitting the E to eject myself. Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting PV Rivers if I don't figure out how to get my steering wheel back running with Windows. Let's see if this takes water. Oh, the triggers were on the side, that's right. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Let's back this sucker up. Whoops. That's this key and that key. I can do this, really. I think I can, I think I can. Alright, so I don't know if that one's gonna work at all. It should. Isn't this water in my trailer? But let's check the other ones out. And it could be just because I'm running over a cow. Because I have the errors in the map. I might have to fix that first. Oh yeah, triggers are on the outside for this one. Let's go back around. My half a barn. If all is working, and we got floating barns over here. Yes. There we go. So this one, I don't know about that water tank, if that's even for cows or whatever. But, so, you can experiment and let me know. But we can fill water in the cows, so that's working. And also, we could also look here. If we look, we should see on the animals page that it will have water for the sheep, water and wheat for your chickens, and water for your cows, and I don't know what that other one. Maybe you can't have both of them. That's a possibility. Maybe you can't have both the trailer and the trough at the same time. I have no idea because I can't read German. <laughs> All right, where do we put the chickens? In the we'll head over there. Feed our chickens and our other thingamabobbers. Our yeah, the thingamabobbers. I use turn the steering wheel right. That part doesn't even work. So my whole steering wheel needs Cortana needs to set up my steering wheel. Actually. I bet you I could probably unplug it and replug it back in, or maybe, who knows, something failed in the upgrade process. 
refill our water for our sheep. And it took some water, so we're good there. And some water for our chickens. And one of these is water. Best way to find out. I think it was the first one we put in. There you go. So that's pretty simple on how to set up your water mod. And we can test the wheat too. Might as well while we're here. We just need to grab a tipper, which... I have a nice pink one over here from that, uh, yeah, whenever we did the default vehicles. So yeah, let's grab the pink tipper to go with the pink tractor, or red tractor. Back it up. Also, if you guys have anything that you need to learn... Oh, can I not put a pink tipper on this ugly tractor? I guess I can't because it's different attachment. Alright, let's get into another ugly tractor. If there's anything you want me to teach on map classes, just let me know because I can do several different things. But we're at the point where... It's really going to be specific to what types of mods you want to install in your map or maybe techniques or something that you I did not cover that you guys are having trouble with. Just send me a message or you can let me know. Still no polka dots. That's Big Daddy's department. He does the skinning. So apparently uh, oh, that's right. My steering wheel keys aren't working. That's better. The O key. Yeah, I will. It's uh, this video will be on YouTube as all of our map classes eventually do make it there. It'll also be on Twitch for a couple weeks, but uh, the YouTube definitely will be there. Where am I going? I'm going to the cows. Back up. It's the pink tipper with the green tractor. It just clashes a little bit. Yeah, all the videos for the map classes eventually. I did catch them up last week, but we got, we're got one map class behind. And I'll probably try to catch them all up again as well. On After tonight's broadcast of the next show. But there you go. You have your water mod installed completely even a piece that doesn't work so if you can figure out exactly how that little water chart and it might be that you just can't have two of them so you can't find the trigger to fill the silos up in the edit map if you can't find a trigger it's the fill trigger for a silo is right here we'll show you if you can't find it actually it's an orange box that you can see here so I'm assuming you mean this one filling the silo and if it's not in your map well let's exit out of this and I will show you what you can do if you're ever missing any triggers especially it's a good question. We will go into... Well, you have your map class map. I don't know where it is in there. It's There probably is one in the map. and But if you cannot find one, just go to any other map that has a silo in it. And I'll show you what you have to change. If we went to, for instance, and when Fences... Fences still does... Thanks for the follow there, Carter... Carteris 9, I think it is. Open up any other map. Like, well, that's not a, that has a silo. Let's go to uh, Pleasant Valley version 2. And you can follow the export commands that I, I actually had at exporting files from a, a map. Actually, I think next uh, 
the next class I will do will show you how to take a object out of a 2013 map which is a little bit more complicated than a 2015 map and but definitely a good topic because there are a lot of things left behind in 2013 maps that aren't quite available in 2015 at this point and I see that there's Sazy, thanks for the follow. And that'll be popping up on the screen in just a minute. But if you open up any map that has a silo trigger, you can copy that trigger. Any trigger, actually. The question is, will it work? But if it's a, <laughs> if it's a giant's trigger, which the silo triggers for dumping are, then you can copy it out of any map you could copy it out of your Bjorn home map. You just have to export the trigger from the map and then import it into your other map. And then change the fruit type settings on the settings. So in a minute here we'll have a Fences version 2 which is a big map so it takes a while to load. The other, and I'll show you another technique too but here we are just go to one of the farms that has a silo and if it's the dump trigger you're looking for right here you just go file export selection with files I'm gonna put it right into my map class map and heck we'll put it right in the objects folder and we'll call it silo dump trigger and then save it now if we go over to the other map we'll close this without making any changes it should close down in a second it takes longer to close down sometimes than it does to boot up could I teach how to install conveyor belts there are, conveyor belts are interesting depends on the conveyor belts but yeah we can get into doing a whole food storage barn as well and I'm still looking for one that isn't so laggy on servers the, the, the one we have in rivers is slight frame drops on servers for some it's more than others but we can get into installing all those different types of mods. I'd like to show you guys how to get any of those extra things in. So yeah, we'll be doing these types of classes for a little while. I just wanted to make one note too. Next Friday's class will not happen. I have to go away on Friday, but we will move the uh, weekly preview to Thursday. But I'm, I gotta go out of town, so I'm gonna skip the map class next Friday and just do a weekly preview on Thursday instead of Friday, and then we'll be back for Tuesdays as well. So we have our map and I'll mention that again next week. Let's open our map class map again and I'll show you a couple of things you can do. If you can't find the trigger but it is in there it is very hard to find. So you could either copy a new one, but, because, but eventually what you're going to end up with, yeah, <laughs> well, the heart, oh, I'm sorry, but going out of town for a few days and I got to leave early Friday. So I am going to do the preview on Thursday, keep you guys up to date with what's going on, but we might even do an extra long preview next week on Thursday, start a little earlier at the eight o'clock time. I'm just not going to have time to prepare with everything else that's going on to get any type of map class going but we will have Tuesdays this week so we're in the map you need a silo trigger which is right there on my map but you couldn't find it and you have all the junk on the map what I like to do your silo trigger is gonna be a square like that it looks just like that if you take every file in your map highlight the first one hold shift down highlight the second one you can see at least an outline and the triggers will be highlighted and then scroll over here and see we know I mean you're gonna have we know this is a train trigger because the gates there but just look for a rectangle 
you're going to have to do this eventually just to see what other objects are left on the map that you didn't want on there after you placed everything and leave stuff behind. But you can highlight everything and look for a rectangle trigger. And if you don't see it, then we will import another one from my map, which I just showed you how to export it. Unhighlight everything by clicking anywhere. Now if we go back to the plus sign, it picks up on the last folder that I hit. It. There it is, silo dump trigger. Just open it up. Bring it over here. Actually, we're not doing it to the windmill. It's a silo trigger, so you bring it over here. It's the same trigger as this one. The only difference is the fruit types need to be changed to whatever your fruit types are. And we already have them here, but if you just have wheat, barley, rape, potato, you can type these in. But if I did this and I put it into the fruit type folder, it works the same. You got to have price multipliers aren't even necessary. And it doesn't need, so basically that's all you need to do is make sure your fruit types are in properly with a space in between and spelled correctly, all lowercase for most of them. So technically speaking, in this case, these silo triggers don't even need to be near a silo. You can put them anywhere on the map. You can even have five silo triggers lined up here, one for each fruit type, and they're all going to go into the main thing. So that's how you would get separate silo triggers. And then you'd have to, you can make individual silos for everything by just copying this trigger and just ma duplicating that one. It's where the triggers fall to get that trigger. It's right here. If I duplicated this one and moved it over here and I set it for just wheat and then I dump that dump new dump box just wheat, technically you have two silos separate. I don't know why you want to do that but you can have multiple dump points and there are always reasons for doing things depending on the style of your map. Now I lost that box. See how I can't find it? I don't know where I put it. If that ever happens, just go and you don't know where things are. Well, I know where it is because it's at the bottom because we just imported it. But you could highlight everything. And you can see there's my new box. And you can set that for just wheat. Move another copy of the silo over here and you have the other wheat trigger. So there are several things you can do with your silo triggers. You just got to make sure the dump one has what's going in and the pickup one has what's coming out. And that's pretty much it. So, with that being said, anybody else has any questions? <laughs> I can answer them. We'll see what we can. Uh, no flashback on next Saturday either, but we are doing this week's tomorrow. And which reminds me, exclamation point flashback. And I'm doing Pleasant Valley 3 this week. And just with the essential mods for now, if... At the time of broadcast, I look through and I decide we want to throw a couple extra mods in there from maybe the... There were three mod packs with uh, Pleasant Valley version 3. So, yeah, who knows? The essentials will get us going, though. It even has the tippers and everything that we need. And we usually don't get that far. But it has ATV and the ATV world triggers where you get money if you can hit them. So that was kind of fun. So we will have that next week, and in about one hour from now, we'll be back, and hopefully my steering wheel will be working, with the weekly preview on, yeah, Pleasant Valley Rivers. See what's new. So I hope you guys come back and join us. Yeah, the fil is there a way to take the fill trigger? Yep. Absolutely. Is there a way to take the fill trigger off this silo and move it onto another building? Pretty much, you could put a fill trigger anywhere. Now, these two are in with the silo load on demand, but if I just cut this out, I can even take it out of the group. A fill trigger is actually an independent object. If I wanted to put the fill trigger in the water and you want to drive in the water to fill it, you can put it there, but if I paste this now outside of the group or let's see if I can figure out this say uh, 
I don't know what's on the map here. Let's go see what's in the junkyard. <laughs> Say you, uh, and I, it's going to be something ridiculous because I don't know what's over here. But, all right. So there is a fill trigger already with that silo. But you could, oh, wait, no, I just control B clicked it. All right, so say you had a silo like this one sitting right here. You can literally, if you want to keep the silo trigger with the silo, you can cut it out, highlight your silo like they did with Giants, and paste it into the silo group, and then just control B, click it over there, and see if we can find it. It's probably underground. There you go. And you could put it with anything. And if you want to keep it with the silo, then just put it in the same group as the silo like I did. And that way, as you're moving it around, the trigger goes with it. But you can put it on any type of building that you have a pipe coming out. You can have a fill trigger. The same way with the uh, dump trigger. I could put that onto this object just by bringing it in. They're independent. <laughs> the politically correct term is the boneyard. Okay. Yeah. They're <laughs> independent of actually everything. So you can put triggers wherever you want and as many as you want. Anywhere you want. So. Any other questions? If not, it's uh, not 802. We'll end this class for today and we're going to be back in. Oh, we're right around 9 o'clock with uh, PV Rivers preview this week and see how that all goes so come on over check it out see what we've done a little bit added here and there but it's it's starting to take shape a little bit got a couple bugs to work out but things are working i think big daddy has a couple of at least one cool mod on that server right now that i'm sure you guys will be interested in so you're gonna have to stop back and check it out in one hour other than that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you very soon.